Hello everyone. Today I would like to show you something about my Homebrew RF generator. This is the whole block of the RF generator. It hasn't been completed because the ultra fast gate driver ICs are still on the way. Let's take a look for the main board. As you can see, this part of the circuit is actually the class D amplifier, which is very similar to the convention Mazili ZVS. These two chokes connect to the MOSFET gate respectively. And uh, this one here is the positive bus bar. This is the negative bus bar. This part is actually the resonant tank circuit or you can see or you can say it's the filter. This is the inductor which has the inductance at around 196 nanohenry. Under the inductor are the resonant tank capacitors. Those are NP0 ceramic capacitors. Um, each of them has the capacity around 100 picofarad. There are 14 of them. Total capacitance is around 1400 picofarad. The two bar, two bars connect to the drain of each MOSFET respectively. Here are two gate pull down resistors. And uh, here, here are eight uh, string, strings of the gate drive resistors. To eliminate the oscillation on the gate, um, each one has the resistance for 0.5 ohm. And here are the decouple decoupling capacitors for the gate drive ICs. There are eight gate drive ICs for each, uh, or there are four, four ICs for each MOSFET. And uh, let's take a look at the driving part of the circuit. As you can see, I designed the board for this special frequency uh, in the beginning, but I can't get the uh, that frequency, the oscillate, I can't get the crystal oscillation for twice the frequency of that. So I only get this frequency. So the board will actually generate a 9.216 megahertz square wave. Those are two trigger ICs. This one will split the frequency to half of the frequency of the oscillator. And uh, the frequency and the splitted frequency will uh, it will generate two uh, two square wave 180 degrees out of phase. Uh, one signal will come to the second trigger and uh, the, the signal w could be uh, can be adjusted on the pulse wise and uh, here actually in the in each chip there are two triggers two triggers so actually four triggers total in total and um, I only use three of them the first one for the uh, frequency divider and uh, two of them for adjusting each each way uh, each signals pulse wise sorry for my poor english and uh, <clears throat> and uh, you can see here uh, you can imagine that here is uh, one signal and here is another signal from the first trigger 180 degrees out of phase, right? We know that 
the circuit is not perfect, so the delay time of each signal uh, will not be the same. But for the class D amplifier, it's important to uh, avoid the... the uh, yeah. I don't know how to say that in English, but uh, it's actually you can't turn on two MOSFETs together or turn them off together. It's very important in a class D amplifier than a half bridge or a four bridge. So you need fine adjustment of the phase angle of two driving signals on the gate. So you can use this method. One signal directly come to the trigger and another signal uh, go into another trigger through a RC delay network phase shifting network you can um, you can use the potentiometer to adjust the voltage so actually adjust the phase angle of the two uh, two signals and uh, here is a here is the ultra fast gate drive IC. Uh, so this here is a VCC and here is ground. Here is enable for channel A and enable for channel B. The input for channel A and the input for channel B also the output for channel A and output for channel B. Uh, what I came across was that I, you can see, uh, to increase the driving current for the gate, I actually parallel the two channels, parallel the two tra channels here, right? But that is very dangerous because uh, you may actually uh, come across a cross conduction, which means if the input A and input B has a little mismatch in the chip, uh, for example, uh, the input A their hold on voltage is two volts, and the input B their hold voltage is two point one volt, and you parallel them together, the input A will conduct will be turned on. Uh, uh, sorry, the output A will be turn on faster than the output B, earlier than out output B, and uh, that will produce a short circuit inside the driving chip, right? And the short current will overheat the chip and uh, finally damage it. Uh, I damaged six chips on my last test. So, what I need to do is to is to connect connect some resistor on each output and parallel them uh, after the resistor after the resistors to the gate to the gate. Um, so I decided to only attach two chips here and uh, solder this output pull output leg to this resistor and solder this output leg to this resistor and I want to use those two uh, place for another two chips I only mount two for each MOSFET uh, that means I will have four has I will have four channel four channels for each MOSFET um, because the Design designed frequency is high and act and I now run it on around nine megahertz. So the driving power is also enough. Is enough only use two chips. Um, I tested the circuit yesterday. Uh, before the chips blown up, the circuit runs very well. Uh, the input voltage is 48 volts and output power, R, output RF power around 250 watts. 250 watts and the heat sink, heat sink is only warm. 
with no forced air core, only two small MOSFETs. The result is very good. I will uh, keep keep tuning this circuit and uh, um, hope it will make a success.